just to really start with an explanation of, of what open intelligence is, is, is key, um, because we all need to know what we're talking about and what we're doing here. And um, open intelligence is what's looking through your eyes right now. So open intelligence is what's hearing these words, what's experiencing yourself sitting on the chair, what knows that you're here. And um, it was interesting for me to come uh, along to Balanced View for the first time and be introduced to something about me that had always been there, but I'd never really noticed. And so if you just stop thinking for a moment and you notice what remains? So just stop describing everything. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's this ability to know, and the next thought just arises spontaneously. The thought might be, um, I can't stop thinking. Um, it, it, it really doesn't matter, it's just an opportunity to identify that there is something about you that is aware of everything that's going on and that this, this awareness or this intelligence is naturally present so that you don't need to do anything to get it. You can't turn it off or turn it on, it's just there the whole time. And um, for me, just that alone was kind of interesting because I was given this suggestion that for short moments I could just stop describing everything and check for myself and to see whether there was this openness of intelligence, this capacity to know that was naturally present and was the basis of whatever I was thinking or feeling or sensing in that particular instance. And this suggestion to take these short moments of identifying open intelligence and to test for myself and to see whether that was true or not. And um, so that's what I did at the beginning. I sort of went about my day and every now and again, kind of infrequently at the beginning, you know, I would remember just, just stop and relax all of this incessant thinking and describing and just notice what's the basis of all of it. You know, is this same awareness, this same intelligence naturally present now? And um, it was for me fascinating to discover that it was always there. And um, it was quite funny because I began to recognise that it was always there and it had always been there. And I'd just been so caught up in my descriptions um, about what was going on I just hadn't really noticed and so for 35 years there'd been this fundamental part of my experience that I just completely ignored and, um, and the reason why this is important is because the way that I'd been trained to use my mind or my intelligence was to, to focus in on the descriptions about you know, what I'm thinking and feeling and what other people are doing and saying and everything that's going on and can just call all of that, all of those descriptions data and they're just streaming within this intelligence. And um, I began to see the um, difference that relying on open intelligence made in a very practical way. And the, the question about decision making is just, just such a brilliant example. You know, we have to make decisions every day about all kinds of things. And then there are some decisions that come up that seem to be like big decisions. And, um, and so my normal process of decision making would be um, I had the decision like, um, you know, should I, should I change job? You know, that's a good decision. You know, so well, how do I decide? Well, I need to think about it. You know, I need to really think about this. I need to spend hours on the internet researching all kinds of things and then thinking about that and then sitting at home and particularly it seemed to be in the middle of the night I needed to lie there thinking about it then as well. I'm not sure where I learned that that's what I needed to do to make this decision but that's what I found myself doing. And, um, and then waking up in the morning and there'd be a moment of just, oh, oh no, the job, the job. <laughs> and, and, just, and then thinking about it then. And, um, and then it would be quite interesting to see the way that it actually often played out was that the, the time, you know, the actual crunch time would come to make the decision about whether I went for this new job or not. And I'd end up doing something, doing or making a decision about a job that I hadn't even thought about or known about up until that point. Someone would just say something, all right, I'll do that then. And so it kind of became clear to me that this way of using my mind, not only did it mean that I didn't sleep very well, 
but it often didn't really seem connected to what I was really doing. Um, so then to put into practice this, this new approach of taking a short moment um, with the same thoughts that came up, you know, should I take this new job? And trying to sort of weigh up the pros and cons, and if I do this, then that will happen, and if I do that, then that will probably happen. And just then to put into practice this really simple technique of just, just resting the mind naturally. So just by stopping all of the descriptions and allowing everything to be as it is, allowing the thoughts just to flow on by, allowing the sensations in the body just to do whatever they're doing. You know, the sort of the fear might come up about, um, you know, am I, I've got to make the right decision. Is this the right decision? Okay, I'm just going to relax with that description too and allow that to be as it is. And um, lots of things happened, even in that first short moment. And you can even test it out now if you, if you think about it. I'm sure you can find a big decision that you've, you've got to make. And as soon as I think about that, that I can feel a kind of, almost like a physical um, sensation of like anxiety, but this big decision, you know, I've got to get this right. And so immediately then, just, just to relax all of those descriptions, and recognize or acknowledge that that description and the physical sensations and all of the thoughts around it are only known in our vas and through this same intelligence that we identified when we stopped thinking. So the capacity to know what's looking through your eyes, the same thing that was looking through your eyes a few minutes ago, that is the only way that we know and experience any of these thoughts, emotions and sensations. So first of all, that is kind of like a huge relief because I can just allow everything to be as it is, just, just for a short moment, just an instant. And in doing that with this thought about a big decision, nothing happens. It's like my anxiety of needing to know the answer and needing to know it now is actually just another passing thought or another experience that appears within this vast expanse of complete openness. And so that's another huge relief, that urgency of having to make the right decision, needing to know what it was now, um, can just relax and just be as it is. It's not something that I need to be constantly worried about. You know, whatever I was doing in my day, I would be preoccupied with this big decision and not, not really enjoying whatever I was doing because there was this big decision. And then what was interesting was to see that when I stopped all of the describing about the big decision, it was like my, my mind was immediately, um, it was just clearer. You, the intelligence by which everything is known didn't go anywhere. But I had a different perspective on all of the thoughts and emotions about the big decision. They were no longer so threatening and they were no longer, well what I saw is that my well-being and this sense of ease was naturally present. So whenever I recognized open intelligence, there was this sense of relief. It's like, ah, oh, actually I can just relax and be just as I am, just for an instant, and I'm, I'm okay. And the more I practiced this, I began to see that this okayness was just present all the time. I just needed to notice it. And that in itself shifted the perspective on decision making. Because I discovered that I am already okay. You know, I, I'm actually fine as I am in this moment. If I stop all of the describing about what's wrong and how I must make the right decision, there is this openness, there's this ease, there's this spaciousness that's just, just there. I just need to notice it. And then that took the pressure off the decision making. Because all of the pressure was about having to make the right decision and the problems and the difficulties and the unhappiness that were likely to happen if I made the wrong decision, and the world of wonder and unending bliss that would be the result if I made the right decision. <laughs> and, um, and looking back, it was interesting that it wasn't my experience. I'd never made a decision that led to unending misery or one that made, led to unending bliss. And yet somehow there was this huge tension and expectation around this big decision. And so that's so nice to be able to relax with all of those thoughts and emotions about decision making. And then you just see everything much more clearly because you're not completely caught up in the descriptions. There is this clarity of perspective. It's like seeing the bigger picture. 
You know, you can see the options that you have. You're able to um, evaluate them much more clearly in a much more um, level-headed way. You can see the different implications. But there's no longer this fear and terror, this hope and fear of making the right decision or not. And then the decision-making process happens much more easily, much more spontaneously. And it's learning to trust this kind of spontaneous wisdom. And um, the perspective on everything opens up. This is, if you like, extracting the power from decision-making. So rather than victimizing myself with these thoughts and pressures about decision-making, I can use these same thoughts and emotions and sensations in the body as my reminders to rely on and return to open intelligence. So everything that has seemed a problem can become a support in the practice of relying on open intelligence for short moments repeated many times. And the worry about making the right decision can be the place where I find the stability and the clarity to see clearly what will be the best decision. And the perspective from open intelligence is all inclusive. And what that means practically is I can see and we all have this same capacity, which decision will be of most benefit to all. And um, I think when I came to this training, that was the strangest thing I'd ever heard. It's like, I have the capacity to make a decision that will be of benefit to all. And um, I have to admit that my interest was actually about the benefit of me. It's just like, I want to be happy. I want to know the nature of reality. I, you know, this benefit of all it sounds nice, but I'll do, I'll do that later. And, um, and it was really interesting to see that as I began to take responsibility for allowing my data, my experience to be as it was, then what opened up was this perspective where I could just see everything more clearly, including my wants and desires, but also the, um, what was going on for other people. So there was the ability to really listen to other people, to really be open in my communication and my relating with other people. And previously what had happened when I'm relating with anyone is just the focus on my own thoughts and emotions about the conversation, um, I don't know how it is for you, but when I'm in conversation with people, there's all kinds of thoughts come up. It's like um, just everything from, well, quite common for me, it was I wish you'd stop talking so I can tell you how interesting my experience <laughs> is about this. It's like, come on, look, please stop talking. And, and, you know, just waiting for that break in the conversation where I can jump in and just show you how brilliant my experience is or how much I know. And, and then instead to just use those thoughts and emotions as well as reminders just to stop describing that, to bring the recognition back to open intelligence and just to rest naturally. And then it's amazing, I've, I've discovered that there are other people in the world and um, that actually they're quite interesting. <laughs> and uh, they off, I can often learn a lot from what they have to say. <laughs> and uh, it's been very humbling to discover that and to really see my prejudices about other people and how I could walk into a room and um, in one way or another, and um, it's not something I'm proud of, it kind of makes me a little, little bit sad, but I could dismiss almost everybody in the room in one way or another in terms of my um, ability to relate with them or, or, or want to relate to them. You know, for one reason or another, I could work that out. You know, why I didn't want to speak to you or why you couldn't tell me anything interesting. Or, you know, and um, it's very painful to see that now. And the difference now is that those same thoughts might even arise. And now I know what to do with them. I can relax and allow them to be as they are. And I rely on open intelligence, which is this open intelligence the basis of all of those thoughts, but to see that I'm not ruled by them anymore. And now when I approach any relating or any communication from that place of openness, um, it's a totally different experience, both for me and for the other person or people, because it's a genuine communication. It's open-hearted. It's one of real care. And this is the switch from seeing how, when I take short moments for myself, I'm actually taking them for everybody. And that was really obvious in these practical ways in terms of the way that I changed the way I related to people. 
it wasn't just me that benefited from not having to try and prove to everyone yeah, how clever I was, um, how experienced I was, how funny I was, how attractive I was. Oh, that was hard work. Um, uh, and, you know, just like filtering everything I did through these um, ideas about how I wanted to present myself. And now just showing up, just completely open as I am, and everything's completely different. Completely different, the way that I relate, the way that I am just comfortable with who I am. The clarity of vision and of perspective and the appliance of that to anything is just fantastic. So your example of reading a book about um, health or well-being and um, diet or whatever the topic is, to read the book and whilst you're reading the book then to rely on open intelligence, it's just incredible. And, um, and I'd always loved reading books about the nature of mind and, and lots of other things as well, but I loved reading those kinds of spiritual books and psychological books. And, and now that I have in my own experience um, access to what these books were talking about, the recognition of the indivisibility of everything and everyone in my own experience and this simple practice and training that allows me to access that and train it up. When I read a book on, on anything, you can really see what is of use in that book to you in your life. And you can really see the assumptions that are made in that book and where their confusion has come from people um, really believing that their thoughts and emotions and have this power over them and the, the conventional approach of trying to accumulate positive experience and you know all of the different ways that we do that. And it's so radical to allow everything to be as it is, to allow yourself to feel um, everything as it is, positive, negative and neutral. It was went against everything that I'd ever learned. It was, well, what do you mean? I mean, I should be accumulating positive experience. That's what everybody else is doing. That's what I've been doing for all of my life. That's surely what I'm meant to be doing. And so it's so radical then to be introduced to something that says, well, have you ever allowed yourself to feel um, uncomfortable or to feel bored or to feel unhappy? I said, no, no, I haven't. I haven't. How, how, how do I do that? And um, the invitation was, well, well just, just try it for a short moment, just, a, just an instant. You don't need to make any long life term, lifelong commitment. You can just test it for a short moment and see what happens. And it was amazing. And, um, and I saw how helpful it was to be um, around other people that were also testing this practice to hear their experience, how it's worked for them, to be able to ask questions to um, trainers that have been putting this into practice for a while and using the support to clarify these data. And, um, and then the, the written trainings and the free media on the website, which just confirmed again and again my capacity to allow everything to be as it was. And what I saw was that I had been giving away my power into my descriptions and into my efforts to manage them, into my efforts to have positive experiences. That's why I've been putting all of my time and energy and money, like all of it. And what I saw is that when I stop that, even for one short moment, and I allow myself to be as I am, I am incredibly powerful. And all of my stories about not being powerful which can certainly still arise, now I know what to do with them. Now I have all of the tools and the support to clarify them, to see that they are simply more descriptions, more data streams arising within this vast expanse of complete openness. And when I go into them, when I begin to describe them, there is an immediate um, collapsing of intelligence, an immediate contraction of this complete openness. And I really do feel um, limited and helpless and afraid. And yet, as soon as I allow them to be as they are, there is the recognition of the reality of complete openness, which is total power. And, um, and it's a power to be of great benefit. And so something that when I came to the training that sounded very far away from my experience, um, you know, being a powerful being that could contribute to the world in um, unlimited ways, it's amazing to see that over my years of involvement, that is actually becoming more and more of my everyday lived experience. 
and I see the power in myself and I see the power in everybody else. You could say this is the ultimate meditation that allows you to bring this total openness of perception into all everyday experience with nothing excluded. And um, I can I can remember um, when I was quite new to the training, um, really testing out short moments in different situations. And I, I remember the first time I was actually just talking to someone. I can't remember, it was just you know, just talking to someone about something, probably football. And um, and in the middle of the conversation, I realised I could take a short moment. So it's just talking about football and just stopping. And just, it's like, ah, oh, God, open intelligence, it's here, it's here, it's here. And it was probably a bit weird for the other person. <laughs> I was talking about QPR or whatever it was, and me just stopping. And, um, but but you're, you're, you're really right. Just, it's like anything, when, when you um, just practice it more and more, it just becomes completely natural. And it's not like, at the beginning, it seemed like I needed to stop everything so that I could recognize open intelligence. And um, the beauty of short moments is that it's just like an instant recognition. You don't need to hold the recognition of open intelligence in place, which then, you know, life does become a bit weird when you're walking around and I've got it, I've got it, don't talk to me. <laughs> and, it, and it's just this complete relaxed naturalness of, of being. And, the media is so beautiful because you don't even you don't even need to listen to it actively. It's like you can put, you can put it on while you're making dinner, and every now and again you'll just hear something from one of the talks that just just confirms the nature of reality, and it's just so obvious that you don't there's nothing to think about. It's just confirming. It was like for me listening to the media was confirming what I already knew. So it wasn't new, but it was I'd never really acknowledged it in the same way. And, um, and the media makes it really easy. You don't even need to think about short moments. You don't need to work them out. It's just hearing the confirmation of reality again and again means that reality becomes more obvious. In the same way that the, the way that we think about reality now has happened without us really... Um, thinking about it. We've just been around other people that describe things in one way and so you need to have positive experiences and this is what you should be doing. But nobody ever said that to me, you know, for years until I read my first self-help book or something. Uh, it was just that's what everybody was doing. And most people were really miserable because they weren't having positive experiences all the time. And so that's what I picked up from everyone around me. So then when you hang out with people that are actually comfortable being however they are, then that's supportive. You sort of pick that up from the people that you're around. The same way watching all of the media, you know, in conventional media, mainstream media, confirming that um, basically I'm, you know, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me and uh, all of my thoughts and emotions and experiences are the proof that there's something wrong with me and then you need to do something about them. And, um, and that's how I learned that, just picking that up from what was going on around me. And so for me, coming across this media, it was just like, this, this is what I want, this is what I've always wanted to know. And, and I knew that quite early on, even if I couldn't really understand everything that was said, there were certain things that I heard, and it was just like, that, that's it, that's it, that's exactly it. All thoughts and emotions, all thoughts, emotions and experiences are like a rainbow appearing within the vastness of space. That's it, that's it, yes, all thoughts and emotions um, resolve naturally like a line drawn in water. Oh yes, yes, that's it. And that's sort of, I just knew, that's my experience, that's it. Finally somebody's telling me what is already going on. And I was just recognising that and having it confirmed. So it, it does become more and more natural and the, the evidence of growing assurance in open intelligence is um, just finding yourself spontaneously being of benefit to all. And it can be very powerful to um, kind of take stock of that and to acknowledge it because it happens so organically. 
you know, at the beginning, like you're sharing, sometimes the differences are so dramatic. You can see, this is what I used to do, and this is what I'm doing now, just through this simple change in the use of the mind. And it's so dramatic that it's really obvious. And then as you continue on with that practice, and shifting into this reality of complete openness, you don't really notice so much because the old way of doing things is something that becomes like a, a bad dream. Or, mm. And um, so it can be really powerful to then acknowledge actually um, to, to take stock. You know, you could do that once a week to take stock and saying, well, where am I actually being of great benefit in my life? Where am I expressing this in my relationships? Um, where am I expressing this in my capacity to do things and to get things done that I never imagined I could do? You know, to really see, oh, this is incredible. Because it becomes so normal, the, the what did Candice say, the, the sense of the miraculous is commonplace. Mm. It's amazing, though, that you've got to that stage where the miraculous is commonplace. 